Dear viewers, Welcome back to our channel. In the world of smartphones, both Apple and Xiaomi are undeniable giants. However, when these two tech giants simultaneously entered the automotive field, their strategies were radically different, and the results were vastly different as well. In the competitive landscape of the tech industry, Xiaomi's success has caught people's attention, especially its decision to enter the automotive sector. However, why, after 10 years of effort, has Apple failed to create a product like the Xiaomi car? The root cause lies in the different genes of the two companies. Apple pursues disruption and innovation, while Xiaomi focuses on cost-effectiveness and accessibility. This difference influences their attitudes towards the automotive industry and their approaches to problem-solving. I have been reflecting on three questions. One, what are the differences in corporate culture and values behind the success and failure of Apple and Xiaomi in the automotive field? 2. What roles do disruptive innovation and cost-effectiveness play in the automotive market? How do these two different business strategies affect product positioning and market competition? 3. What challenges did Apple face in its attempt to make cars? And does its failure imply a change in its development path in other areas? Yes, the stark contrast between Xiaomi and Apple is worth pondering. Xiaomi has successfully entered the automotive market with its unique cost-effectiveness advantage, but its products have been controversial, criticized for lacking innovation and originality. In contrast, although Apple has always strived for disruptive innovation, it has encountered significant difficulties in the automotive field and failed to successfully launch revolutionary products. This comparison reflects the different values and business strategies of the two companies. Apple focuses on disruptive innovation, aiming to lead the tech trends and change industry rules, while Xiaomi prioritizes cost-effectiveness, dedicated to making technology products more accessible to more people. This difference means they face different challenges and opportunities in the automotive field. However, I am concerned about Apple's failure to successfully create a car. Despite its commitment to innovation and high standards, it has encountered setbacks in this field. This may indicate that Apple will face more uncertainty in its future development path and need to reassess its strategic direction and investment focus. I hope Apple can overcome these challenges and continue to bring surprises and changes with its unique spirit of innovation. In online communities, Lei Jun is often nicknamed Lei Bushi or Lei CK, but perhaps calling him Lei Huateng would be more appropriate. Some netizens have asked why Xiaomi can enter the automotive industry while Apple seems to have no plans in this regard. Ultimately, this is because of the stark differences in the corporate culture and core philosophies of the two companies. Apple is based on disruptive innovation, while Xiaomi is synonymous with cost-effectiveness. Such cultural differences make it difficult for Tim Cook to accept Apple launching a car without innovation similar to Xiaomi's Su7. Frankly speaking, the technology used in Xiaomi cars is not unique. From hardware to software, every component on its vehicles can be found as alternatives in the market. However, Lei Jun can easily promote a regular Su7 because he knows that Xiaomi fans care most about the price. The charm of Xiaomi cars lies in being able to experience the luxury of high-end cars at a relatively low price. The success of the Xiaomi One phone is also based on the same principle, it offers a similar experience to high-priced phones at a highly competitive price. Therefore, high cost-effectiveness has become a major feature of the Xiaomi brand. What's wrong with sacrificing some originality for cost-effectiveness? To be honest, part of the reason Xiaomi has succeeded is that its product design draws inspiration from popular products in the market. A more elegant way to put it is paying homage to classics, while bluntly speaking may be seen as imitating others. After the popularity of Apple's iPhone, Lei Jun launched the Mi Phone, when Tesla's Model 3 set off a craze, likewise, Lei Jun launched the Su7. This strategy actually has its merits, as it allows customers to experience cutting-edge technology at half the cost. 
In promoting the popularization of high-tech products, Xiaomi has indeed made significant contributions. Under the leadership of Steve Jobs, Apple injected an innovative spirit, with products from the iMac to the iPod, and then to the revolutionary iPhone, all reflecting this spirit. Although not every innovation has been successful, Apple has always left the public with an impression that it constantly breaks conventions, pursues excellence, and leads the tech world forward. Therefore, when Cook decided to enter the automotive industry, he faced a significant challenge. They had to design a product that could disrupt Tesla and redefine the product of the automotive field. Apple's team of 2,000 people working on the car project for 10 years failed to solve this problem. Over the 10 years, Apple's car changed for leaders. The first was an engineer from Ford, whose mindset was relatively conservative, wanting to imitate Tesla before talking about innovation. This idea violated Apple's taboo, and in less than two years, he stepped down. The second executive at Apple, a leader cultivated internally by the company, who had led the successful design of the iMac. He believed that it seemed unrealistic to quickly surpass competitors in hardware, so he suggested that Apple should leverage its strengths and focus on the software field, especially autonomous driving technology. He proposed the goal of developing level 5 autonomous driving, which is one level higher than the current industry standard. According to Apple's definition, Level 5 autonomous driving vehicles are vehicles that are completely without a steering wheel, brakes, or throttle. If Apple could achieve this, it would undoubtedly introduce a revolutionary product. However, despite his grand vision, it was never realized. Not only was Level 5 unattainable, even Level 3 autonomous driving technology faced numerous challenges. To make up for the technological gap, Apple had to acquire a startup specialized in autonomous driving research as the basis for their Level 3 technology reserve. Apple welcomed a third leader to lead its car project. This executive directly poached a senior vice president from Tesla, putting him in charge of the project. However, little is known about his specific actions at Apple, but it is speculated that he may have tried to make Apple's car a highly intelligent driving experience similar to his work philosophy at Tesla, transforming cars into advanced smart cabins. However, after leaving Apple, he joined Ford Motor Company, continuing to pursue his dream of making cars. When bidding farewell to Apple, he left behind a thought-provoking remark, no one inside Apple really understands cars, they are just blindly doing it there. At Apple, Tim Cook, as the fourth CEO, once again changed the head of the iWatch, hoping to inject some new ideas into the car project through innovative wearable devices. He hoped to integrate health functions such as blood sugar monitoring, heart rate tracking, and sleep improvement into the car. However, Cook gradually realized that these functions made the car more like a mobile medical ambulance than the innovative transportation they wanted. In the end, Cook lost patience with continuing to develop the car and decided to terminate the project. Although this project, which lasted for 10 years, cost $100 billion and involved the efforts of 2,000 people, ended in failure, other companies would try to produce a car even if it meant not wasting the investment. However, Apple is different. It adheres to the philosophy of disruptive innovation and would rather endure huge losses than launch a product that does not fit its brand image. It is this persistence in quality and innovation that makes Apple an outstanding company. Let's discuss again why Cook did not personally involve himself in the automotive manufacturing field. The reason is that he is not like Jobs. His expertise lies in supply chain management and corporate operations, not innovative design. When Jobs chose him as his successor, what he valued was Cook's ability to manage steadily, not the power to disrupt the status quo. Cook indeed lived up to expectations, successfully maintaining the empire left by Jobs and pushing Apple's market value to a peak of $2 trillion. After missing out on the new energy vehicle market, Apple may focus on developing virtual reality and AI, such as smart glasses, until the cost drops and they can be quickly commercialized.
Xiaomi will mimic Apple and Tesla's new product strategies. Lei Jun is jokingly called Lei Bushi or Lei CK online, but given Xiaomi's business model, calling him Lei Huateng would be more appropriate. Finally, let me summarize today's video, hoping it has provided some inspiration and value to you. Xiaomi and Apple have different strategies in the automotive field. Xiaomi focuses on the user, emphasizes cost-effectiveness, and is committed to allowing every ordinary person to drive a Xiaomi car, while Apple focuses on the product, pursues high-end, luxury, and innovation, hence its high R&D costs and market space squeeze. The strategic choices of the two companies reflect the importance of disruptive innovation and cost-effectiveness in market competition. To break through in the fiercely competitive electric vehicle market, understanding market demand and providing high cost-effective products is key. Apple may need to reconsider its product positioning and business model to respond to competitive challenges. The race between Xiaomi and Apple's cars is not only a showdown of technology and business models but also shows the direction of future development of the automotive market. Welcome to share in the comments section. Today's video ends here, see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.